Hey, what's going on? In the first video in this series, we have set up a Redux store and we saw that how we can create a slice and configure our store as well as how we can select the data from the store and how to dispatch an action to the store to mutate the data within the store. And also in the second video in this series, we talked about async functs and how we can use them. In this video, on the other hand, we are going to talk about custom selectors in the Redux store and how we can create a memoized selector to optimize the stored data retrieving. Before going ahead, if you are not familiar with the Redux toolkit, I recommend you to see those previous video in this playlist. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. For this video, I have added a very simple cart functionality to the existing project of this playlist. I have added a cart slice to our store which keeps a list of card items. Each card item consists of two property, QTY and product, and each product in turn consists of three property, ID, name, and the price. That's it. And because I have covered basic topics like creating a slice, actions, and configuring the store, on the first video I'm not gonna cover them in this video from the scratch. Just quick overview will do the trick. As I said, this card slice keeps a list of card items, named items. And this card item also have an action called add to card, which takes in card items as its payload action and then pushes it to its items list. I also added two products to this project for this video, products and card. In the products component, we take a dummy product list, which comes from the dummy data here, as you see, it's just a list of dummy products and in the products component, we map through this products list and then show them to the user. And let me show you how it looks like. So you can see that here is our three products and also each product card has a button named add to cart, which if I go to the products component, you can see that in this button, we dispatch add to cart action and then pass a cart item with the current product and also QTY of one. We also have a cart component which is responsible for how many products are in the cart item list. Note that I haven't implemented the functionality of selecting total item in the cart in this component yet. So let's get started. In the cart component, we want to select the total products QTY which have been added to the card items of the card slice. So let's define a selector here. So let's use the use selector hook to do this. So I'm say const total item QDivide equals to use app selector and pass in callback function which takes our state. And then in the body of this function, we're gonna return state dot cart dot items dot reduce and then sum up the total item queue device so I say total it's gonna be a number and current or curve for short is gonna be a cart item and then return the total plus equals to curve dot q device and the initial value is gonna be zero and let's just cancel like the selector run before we return the total item in the cart slice. So now let me add this total item Q divide to our JSX. So I put a span here and inside that span I put the total item Q divide here and let me quickly add some couple of CSS classes font bold and mx of two and let me save this and open up my browser you can see that we have three products here and if I click on the add to cart button you can see the uh, item QDY changes by one. So if I open up my console here and click on the add to cart you can see that selector runs here in the console. So by every change to our list of cart items our selector is run again. And that makes sense. But what if I add a person to a person's list which is kept on the separate slice? So if I add John here, you can see that selector run again in the cart component, which is not desirable. 
Basically, when you do a change to the store, all of the selectors are run again. But if you do some expensive computation in one of your selectors, it is better to create a memoized version of that selector. By doing this, the memoized selector is not going to run on every changes to the store. In order to create a memoized version of a selector, we use create selector function, which comes from the Redux toolkit. So let me go back to the cut slice here and here we are going to create a memoized custom selector for this cut slice. So I say export const total item qdy selector equals to create selector function which this create selector comes from the redux toolkit here. The create selector function takes two type of parameters. There are input selectors, which you can have more than one of them. And then there is the result function. You pass in the input selectors and then the result function processes the data and then returns it. As long as the input values don't change, the generated selector won't rerun the result function. So let me define our input selector here. So I say const items which equals to a function which take the state, which this state is type of root state, which we have defined in our uh, store.ts file, which is the type of our whole state. So I go back to the card slice and say this function returns state.card.items. So this is our input selector. So let me go back to the uh, create selector function. And as I said, we can have more than one input selector. So we have to uh, pass in the input selector in an array. So I say items in the array, and then we have to define our result function. So this result function takes our input selector again as a parameter. So I say items, and then it returns the value we want from the items. So here we want items that reduce total which is a number and then current which is a card item then return total plus equals to cur dot qdy and then the initial value is zero so here we have uh, defined a, a custom selector which is memoized and this takes the card items as input selector and then calculate the total QDY items in the card item list and then return it. So here let me add a console.log inside the result function in order to find when the result function is rerun. So here I say return items.reduce and then before the return I say console.log custom selector round. Okay, that's it. So I go back to the card component and here in the use app selector, I remove all of the callback here and just say total item QDY selector, which comes from the card slice here. So let me save this and open up my browser to test it. So let me clear the console here. If I click on the add to cart, you can see that custom selector is run. Custom selector is run twice. And if I add a person here in the person slice, you can see that the custom selector doesn't rerun the resulted function on every state change. So if I go back to the cart slice, you can see we have two type of parameters in the create selector. We have item, which is an input selector, which we have defined here. And then the second parameter takes in callback function, which takes the input selectors as parameter and then return what we want from the input selector. As long as these input selectors don't change, this result function won't rerun. So in this way, we can memoize our selector and optimize our Redux store functionality. We can also have extra parameter for our custom selectors. So imagine that we want to pass, for example, a limit parameter to our selector and say that the result function 
returns true if the total items QDVI is exceeded from this limit parameter. So let's implement this custom selector. So I said export, export const total QDVI limit selector equals to create selector function and then we pass our input selector in the array so i say items which we defined here and then in order to pass our extra parameter we have to define a function which takes all of the previous input selectors plus the parameter so i say items and then our parameter which is a limit and its type of number and this function returns the limit which is our parameter and then as before we define our result function which takes our input selector as parameter so i say items and also limit and then return a function and in this function we first calculate the total number of q device so i say const total equals to this function which is the total number of q device and then return if total is greater than limit that's it and in the card component here i'm going to define a variable so i say const is exceeded and equals to use add selector so our previous custom selector doesn't take any extra parameter so we just passed it to the use app selector but this time is different our custom selector takes an extra parameter so we have to pass a callback so i say state and then call our custom selector which is total q limit selector and then pass our state to it and our limit so i say limit is going to be five for example and in our JSX, we're going to have another div. And then inside that div, I'm going to pass two span elements, just like before, is exceed. And in the second span here, I'm going to say if is exceed is true, then pass yes, and else pass no. So let me save this and open up my browser here and you can see that the total card items are zero and if i click on the add to cart and as long as it exceeded from the five you can see that is exit is set to yes so let me quickly review what we have done here i go to the card slice here we create a custom selector with two input selector one is the item which we have defined here and the other is a function that takes all of the previous input selector plus the parameter we want to pass to our selector. And this callback function returns just the limit. So in this way, we say to the create selector function that our selector is going to have a, a limit parameter as an extra parameter. So here in the body of the result function, we take all of the input selector plus the uh, extra parameter as a input parameter. And then in the body, we calculate the total items QDVI and returns if the total item is greater than limit parameter. So in this way, we have we can have extra parameter with our in custom selector. So I think that's it for today and if you like the video please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button and stay tuned for our next video. Bye bye.